Hi everybody, this is Joe slash FizzleCC, and today I'm going to be sharing some pretty exciting new updates in the world of Construct 3. They've included a new plugin called the 3D Shape plugin, as well as made some changes to the mesh distortion feature, which allows you to include Z elevation. These are some pretty cool tools to have in our tool belt, and today I'm going to be covering the basics of it, as well as some examples of how to incorporate it into your games. So let's go ahead and dive on it. Okay, so first and foremost, I'm using release 246, which is currently in beta, and this released, I believe, yesterday at the time of the filming of this video, and there's some pretty awesome updates in here. Uh, the 3D Shape plugin got some upgrades, as well as the mesh editor, we can now use the elevation, and that's what we're gonna be focusing on today. So let's go ahead and jump into the editor and take a look at what those plugins and capabilities are about. All right, so inside of a blank layout here, if you wanna use the new 3D Shape plugin. Go ahead, just like you're adding any object or a sprite, uh, and type in 3D, and 3D Shape comes up. Right away, when you add it, you'll see that they've included some basic artwork for a dice, which totally makes sense. You've got these six sides here, back, front, left, right, top, and bottom. And you can go ahead and add artwork into each of these faces and have that be represented in your object. The default object is a box, but you can also change it from a box to other shapes. So first and foremost, if you pan the camera around here, you'll see that you can now uh, have this 3D effect of the box inside of your games. Um, you can adjust the height by adjusting underneath the properties, this Z height, so let's change it to five. And if you come down here, you'll notice that you have the shape uh, under properties, and you can come in and change it from a box to any of these six shapes. So you've got box, prism, wedge, pyramid, corner out, and corner in. And while those are simple, it gives you a lot of flexibility and you can stack these and make more complex shapes out of these smaller shapes. So it really is the foundation of being able to start to do some pretty interesting things inside of your game to make it look like a 3D game or to have some interesting 3D effects. Now, one thing that we still don't have in the engine, which will be cool if they can implement at some point, is your camera is still fixed. Uh, you don't have the ability to rotate the camera and do a 3D camera type of feel. So hopefully we'll see something like that in the future, but right now this is what we're working with. Now, in the most recent release, they added something that was really cool. Now, when I was starting to tinker with this over the last week or two, it was kind of limiting to have to have a static image in each of these faces. And what they've done now is that you can actually come down here and assign each face to its own sprite or tiled background, etc. And what's really cool about that is that now you can have uh, change the frame or the animation of that sprite and it will be represented on that face. So let's go into this other layout where I've already put some of these things together to test it out. All right, so zooming on in here, I've added some artwork where I have these blades that are going to spin and these lasers that are going to turn on and off in the game. And I've also put in this little car object here so we can drive around and see what it looks like. So let's give this a play. And that's super cool. I mean, look at this. Um, on each of these faces, I've put these sprites and I'm changing their animations in the runtime. And the way that this was done, just to really paint the picture, is I've got these sprites up here where I've loaded my animations and I'm playing those animations and automatically by playing this animation and having it assigned to this face, it's playing it on that object. So that's really cool. The other thing I wanted to cover before I jump into the game examples is the mesh editor now being able to have a Z elevation. So what I've done here is I've got a tiled background that I've called Mesh Test. And it's just a simple repeatable tile of a brick palette. And inside of here, I've defined some instance variables because I'm gonna change it in the runtime. And I haven't played with it to dynamically change it like I've done in 2D yet, but I wanted to see, can I just fold this into a cube? And through brute force, I'll show you the, the, the event sheet here. I went through and I unlurped like I typically would between the bounding boxes and where I want the point to be. But now I've got this Z elevation. And instead of it always being zero, I can now give it depth, which means I can replicate complex shapes. 
Now, I'm only going to do a cube, but you can imagine if you get pretty clever, you can write some functions and some routines to generate more complex geometry. So let's go ahead and give this a play. And now instead of a flat shape, you can see I actually have this cube. And I've put these helper sprites here at the corners just to help kind of visualize where all those points went. Um, the other thing I want to show you is if we go ahead and add a solid behavior to this object, that will actually work in the engine. So if I go ahead and hit play and I drive into this thing, oh, boom, it works. So collisions work inside of the folded up box, which is super cool. All right. So that's the basics of the 3D shape plugin and this 3D um, mesh distortion feature with the addition of the Z elevation. Now I'm gonna show you a couple of games that I've been inspired to start to work on that I'll do future tutorials and devlogs on uh, as a result of having these new capabilities. So the first one I'm tentatively currently calling Precinct Wars. And it's very much so uh, uh, inspired by GTA 2. And in this one, I created all this before I had this most recent update. Um, so I don't have any dynamic images but uh, on any of my 3D shape plugins. But what's really cool about this is I'm using the box uh, 3D shape plugin to create all these buildings in a world that I'm driving around in. And because of that, it gives it this really cool effect. I can rotate my layers. I can do all sorts of fun things and it's just really smooth. And I'm really happy with how this is turning out. I've also incorporated a mini map. Um, and one of the things to note uh, as I look at this mini map is you can actually with the most recent update go into your layers and assign them a rendering mode of whether or not they're 2d or 3d so if you have an overlay for your user interface etc that you want to make sure is always on top you want to set this to 2d otherwise if you leave it 3d you might have some taller objects start to you know clip on top of your text or whatever it is that you're trying to show. So that was a really important update that they just included in the most recent update in 246. Um, the other thing I wanted to do is give a big shout out to Probable Train and his city generator. I used this to create this world. Highly recommend you go and check it out. Link down below. I was able to take uh, the SVG download out of this, get the XML data from it and convert it to JSON. And through that, I was able to take each of these points of the buildings and use it to plop down where all my buildings would be, as well as to make my roads go through it using mesh distortion. And I'll do more uh, devlog type of content on that in the future, but uh, super cool tool, uh, probable train, definitely recommend you guys take a look at it. Um, it's pretty cool for creating big worlds quickly. All right. The second game I wanted to quickly show you uh, that I was inspired to create was this deep puzzle. And it's meant to be kind of this, you know, falling cube where you're trying to rotate the, the piece to match the opening. And if you do, you're kind of like mining these, uh, you know, rare ores or, or, you know, these different materials and based off of the streak and how many times you're able to do this in a row, it gets faster and faster. And the more, uh, you know, or you're able to mine and it's meant to just be a really simple, casual game, but I was really happy with the visual effect of using these 3d shapes in this way to create a compelling infinite fall game. So uh, I've been having lots of fun with the 3d shape plugin. And with that, that really wraps up what I wanted to cover today. So, um, put your comments down below. Let me know what you guys think of the new 3D uh, capabilities inside of Construct 3. Also, feel free to give me a thumbs up and a subscribe. Uh, super appreciate it. It's free for you to do and it makes a big difference for me. And with that said, everybody, have a good day.